up until now, we've been using the rational zeros theorem to find a list of all the possible zeros of a polynomial. And I've mentioned that you can then take the numbers in that list and plug them into the function to test them to find the zeros. I want to show you a technique for that in, in this third degree equation um, that it's a lot of work, but it's probably the quickest way to find those zeros outside of using um, a graphing calculator. Um, and we'll take a quick look at how to do that too at the end, because I think you should know how to do this method, but uh, if you want to use the graphing calculator to check your work or um, to make it a little uh, quicker to do the problem after you've learned how to do the method, I think that's okay. So let's start with the rational zero theorem uh, to get a list of our possible zeros of this function. And remember, what you do is you take all of the factors of the constant term and put them over all of the factors of the leading coefficient. So the factors of 7 would be 1 and 7, but of course uh, negative 1 and negative 7 as well, so we'll just put a plus and minus on those. And the factors of 6, plus and minus 1, <clears throat> plus and minus 2, plus and minus 3, and plus and minus 6. All right, so put these over those. So 1 over 1 is 1, and 1 over 2, 1 half. And then we'll have 1 over 3 and 1 over 6. And let's move on to the 7 then. So 7 over 1 is 7. And then 7 halves. And 7 thirds. And 7 sixths. doesn't look like we have any duplicate values in this list. So what we've got here uh, is a list of 16 possible zeros of this function. That's a lot uh, to test. And the next step would be to take each of these and plug them in for x and crunch it out, see if the, the function equals 0. If it does equal 0, then we've found an actual 0. And that sounds like a lot of work. Uh, with 16 different functions to calculate that. I've got a couple of suggestions for how to make this easier. Uh, the first one is that maybe the writers of this problem aren't cruel, awful human beings. And so it might be one of these easier values, like one of the whole numbers, uh, the one plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 7. That's a solution. So I'd probably start by testing those to see if the easy ones are maybe one of the solutions. And then uh, you might also want to use a spreadsheet for this. And I've set one up. I'll show you here in just a minute. Um, but I also want to say that once you find just one of the zeros, you can know one of the factors of the equation. So then you can divide out that factor and see if you get a, a quadratic that you can then factor. Uh, so we'll try that method. Let's uh, go ahead and look at this spreadsheet. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see what I've done. OK, so here I've got two cells uh, with numbers in them. The cell A1 is just a place where you'd put in a value. So this would be the spot where we're going to type in all the different um, values we have for for the possible zero and test them. And this cell, I've typed in a formula. You can see I've got six times whatever's in A1 times whatever's in A1 times whatever's in A1. A1 is like x, so this is 6x to the third right there. This is negative 41x squared. This is negative 8x, and this is plus 7. So this calculates the value of that function. So we plug in the 0 here. If we get a 0, or the 0 candidate, if we get a, a, the number 0 in this cell, that means we've found a 0. You can see I've, I've typed in 1, and I got negative 36. So I failed on 1. Let's type in negative 1 and see what we get there. Oh, no, that's negative 32. Uh, let's go with those whole numbers and, and hope that uh, uh, our um, the writer of the problem was being nice. I'll type in a negative 7. No. How about a 7? Aha! So we found one. So 7 is a 0 of this function. Let me zoom back out. So what we know is that 7 is one of the zeros. What that means is that x minus 7 is a factor of this polynomial. So what we could do is just divide out and divide this by x minus 7 and see what quadratic we get. Um, you could do that with synthetic division. I think I'm just going to use regular old polynomial division. Um, this might be a good time to review that. 
So when we do polynomial division, remember we set up this traditional looking division problem, but you have to make sure you've got each of the powers of x. Oops, that should be a minus. So minus 41x squared minus 8x plus 7. So each of the powers of x in descending order, starting with the highest one, looks like we've got all of those. We don't need to fill in any zeros there. And then um, you start by asking yourself, uh, what would I have to multiply this x by to get 6x cubed? Well, you'd have to multiply it by 6x squared. And then we multiply by the whole thing. So 6x squared times x is 6x cubed. And 6x squared times negative 7 is negative 42x squared. Then we subtract. And you got to be really careful with the signs. So this is 6x cubed minus 6x cubed. That's 0. That's exactly what we want. We want that leading term to disappear. And then this is negative 41x squared minus a negative 42x squared. So that's like plus. 42x squared. So this comes out to be a positive x squared. Once we've done the subtraction, we bring our next term down. So this is minus 8x. And then we go back up to the top and ask, what do I need to multiply x by to get an x squared here? The answer is just x. So I put plus x. Now I multiply. x times x is x squared. x times negative 7 is negative 7x. And we subtract again x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative 8x minus a negative 7x, so it's like plus 7x, gives us a negative x. And then we bring down this 7. And what do we need to multiply x by to get negative x? That would be a negative 1. So negative 1 times x, negative x, negative 1 times a negative 7 is a plus 7. Aha, and this just, when we subtract it, um, this all just goes away. We have a remainder of 0, which we should if x minus 7 really is a factor. It should give us a remainder of 0. Now what we have is this quadratic. And I think we can easily factor this one. Let's see. So it's going to be, it's got a negative last term. So we're going to have one of these be plus and one of these be minus. The, the only possible factors of the last term are 1, so it's going to be something plus 1 and something minus 1. It needs to add up to a positive 1x. So I think 2x here and 3x here. So then we'd have a positive 3x, a negative 2. Yeah. So if you FOIL that out, um, you can verify that those are the factors. But that, um, that definitely works. Let's set each of those equal to 0 and solve. So 2x plus 1 equals 0. We would subtract 1 and then divide by 2. And we're going to get x equals negative 1 half. And this one, if you do the same thing, we would add 1 and divide by 3. You're going to get x equals positive 1 third. So we have found all of our zeros. We have negative 1 half. We have 1 third. And we have 7. So that was quite a bit of work uh, to find those. Let me show you the cheaty way. I'm going to open up a, a graphing calculator here. And uh, this is a great way to check your work to make sure you got it right. If you know this process backwards and forward, maybe you can um, you know, spend some, some of your time doing it this way rather than um, spending all of your time doing it the hard way. But that's up to you and your teacher. Some people might think that's cheating. I'm going to just type in the function here, minus 8x and plus 7. All right. And then wherever this thing crosses the x-axis, those are going to be the zeros. You can see we've got one at 7. We've got one at 1 third. And we've got one at negative 1 half. So it looks like uh, we did our work correctly here. So that is how to find the zeros of a function, starting with the rational zeros theorem, testing one, maybe using a spreadsheet to test it until we find one, and then using uh, polynomial division, and then factoring the quadratic that's left over. Phew.